We'll do that on Wednesday. Um, so let's see, before we start, I just want to make a comment about um, one of the problems I mentioned last time was this counting or localizing or uh, finding the uh, periodic solutions for a planar system. Um, <clears throat> even when the um, right hand side is a polynomial, so it's rather simple. Um, and I, I mentioned that's kind of, uh, th that's an open problem. In fact, um, it is one of, actually is the 16th Hilbert problem that was uh, dates back from 1900s um, when Hilbert actually posed I think 23 or uh, anyway a number of major problems that uh, needed, to, needed to be kind of uh, resolved or something um, and that's that sort of the whole um, 20th century uh, and it's still un uh, not resolved and it's um, so you can read yeah, I don't know how many. The incredible number of, of them are still unsolved. Um, I don't know about nine, but I think even more. Um, <clears throat> Maybe it was the ninth when it was recently solved. How many are there I think 23, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it's, uh, you, can, uh, you can Google. Um, So Hilbert, twenty-three. So twenty-three problems. Um, let's see, and and these are the problems. Okay, there are. So let's look at number sixteen. Is it sixteen? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there are not many. Uh, let's see. I thought it was number sixteenth, but um, yeah. So it's asking uh, just even find uh, an upper bound for the number of limit cycles in polynomial vector fields of degree n, even in the plane. And that's um, so. So the the point is that when we um, write a, a a system, a planar system. And we're asking, uh, you know, equilibria are simple, right? Equilibria. That means algebra, you know, maybe complicated, but it's basically setting, you know, solving a system of algebraic equations. So that kind of fades in comparison with finding periodic solutions, orbits, or limit cycles. What's the difference between a periodic orbit and a limit cycle? Exactly. So, so when you, when you read, you know, a periodic solution could be um, you know, there could be like like many, right? Situation where uh, there are many periodic solutions 
and this red one is not a limit cycle because it's not a limit of anything, right? It's just every single one does its own thing, right? So you can imagine a Hamiltonian system that has this as the level curves, right? So this is this is a periodic solution. There are several periodic solutions, but not a limit cycle, right? Whereas a limit, you know, a limit cycle would be a cycle, so it would be a periodic solution that is a limit, like omega limit or alpha limit. Let's say it's an omega limit. Right? And it could be from interior or from exterior. So in this case, gamma is omega limit of some. Uh, solution, right, starting at some point. Okay? So, count or, or, or anticipating where these limit cycles might might exist or how many exist and so forth, it's, it's a very difficult problem. So, so we're going to be really um, working with this kind of system but having this thing in mind that, uh, that, you know, we're in really kind of we're limited in what we can actually uh, say about a system. In fact, um, one of the typical examples uh, called, you know, it's planar system is called Van der Poel equation. Or system. Um, which has this x prime is y minus plus x minus x cubed, y prime is minus x. There actually is, you see it's, it's, poly, it's polynomial, right? It's cubic in one and linear in the other one. So the question is, what kind of, um, you know, periodic solutions do you have? And it turns out that it has unique Um, periodic solutions. And to prove that, you need actually quite a bit of um, tools, and we're, we're going to postpone that, I guess. Um, it looks something like this. Okay, just one of them, and the others are it's a limit cycle, and the others are approaching it. So, okay, so this is all other solutions um, except uh, equilibrium. Are um, converging to this limit cycle gamma. Okay. So anything that that's outside is eventually going to wrap around this. Anything that's inside is going to wrap around that, except. Of course, the steady state, which is the uh, equilibrium, which is unstable. Okay, so everything. <clears throat> so gamma is the omega limit set of any uh, for all x not points in the plane except the origin. Okay, so this statement, you know, requires a proof, and it's not at all obvious just by looking at that system. Okay. Yeah. Do we say that all the points in the periodic solutions are also equilibrium points? No. They're not equilibrium. Because they're approached, though, by the, both the inside and the outside. So the omega limit set. They're in the omega limit set of, of any solution. But you see a point here is approached, but it's approaching this at, at different times. You see this as it spirals towards it. You can find times. But it doesn't mean that, you see, each, 
if you're focusing on this point, right, and you're saying I'm, I'm getting close to it, the speed at which this, the direction field nearby this is always strictly greater than zero. So it cannot really kind of settle to that point. It always like um, try to mimic the speed at which the solution at this point has. Okay, so the length of the of the, of the, of the magnitude of the direction of the right hand side. And you can see the only equilibria of this obviously is when x is zero and therefore when y is zero. Okay? All right. So anyway, so that's um, you know that's in chapter twelve. So um, so let's see what happens in general. What can we say in general? I mean, <clears throat> so the first thing we can uh, we can talk about is let's start um, by talking about local sections. And of course, the ultimate goal would be that Poincaré uh, Bendixson theorem, which kind of says in the plane what you're having in the omega limit set of any solution is you either have equilibrium points or you have periodic solutions. Okay. So, what is a local section? First of all, um, So let's let's take x naught a point in I don't know in the in the in the domain and let's say we have a vector field defined on the whole domain on the whole plane so we don't have problems uh, of that nature okay so at this point there's going to be a direction f of x naught right and there's going to be solutions. Well, there's going to be a solution that fits the direction field. Okay. So, if the if the vector field is not zero at that point, which another way of saying is x naught is not an equilibrium. Okay. Then here's the here's what we're going to do. We would like to kind of understand the flow around this point. Okay, by flow we mean you know starting at different points. What, what's going to happen with the solution? Okay. And because this vector is non-zero, so it's it's actually it has a direction and a um, and a magnitude non-zero magnitude. Then you can actually look at the direction perpendicular. Okay? So define L of X naught to be the line um, through X naught and orthogonal to F of X naught. Okay? Okay, so let me just say in any words, but what, what's the role of this is? Well, the role of this is I'm gonna we're gonna look at points that are uh, close to x naught, but in this direction that's orthogonal to to x naught, and we're gonna say the following: we're gonna, we're gonna say that f is also non-zero at those points, right? At least if we stay close to uh, close to x naught, right? So since F is continuous at x naught. F of x is not zero, right? And and some neighborhood of x naught. Okay. So it's not going to be zero at not only along that direction, but you know even. Uh, off the direction, so just in a, in a neighborhood, so in some neighborhood of this point, right? In particular, at this point, it's not going to be zero, so why not uh, draw the direction, I mean, not the direction, but the solution curves through these points, okay? Because there's going to be, okay?
Okay. Well, the first thing to to uh, to say is the following: is is let's how far can we go in this direction? Well, we can go pretty much as far as um, there is no there is no equilibrium at this point. So so as long as f in this at this point points, you know, in some direction, so it's not zero then we can go all the way in that direction. So certainly there's going to be an interval. So let's let's take this interval here. Okay, so I'm going to call this interval S. So this means that there exists an interval um, so do we call it S? Well, let's call it I. S is going to be uh, the actual segment, line segment. There's an interval containing zero. And um, S a line segment on this line L of X naught such that um, F of X is not zero for all X in S Okay, so all, this is all I'm, I'm sorry I have to scroll back and forth, but this, is the interval, this is the, the segment, line segment that I'm considering where f is not zero, okay? This particular one is going to be called a local section, s is a local section through X naught. Okay? And the role of this is the following. Okay? The role of this is, is as follows. It basically says that for all points through this local section, we can actually construct what's called a flow box. So if we kind of take a snapshot in the neighborhood of that point, what we're going to see, we're going to see this um, solution curves that are not intersect. I mean, they're not intersect. Uh, distinct solution curves don't intersect each other, and they cover this neighborhood. Okay, so this is going to be called a flow box, and this was this local section. Okay. And what do we do with this flow box? Well, we can parameterize, we can, we can say the following. We can say that this is, this region is conjugate to a very simple region. Okay. So this is the local section and uh, by continuity, of the flow map. What's the flow map? Flow map it goes from uh, I think we used I'm sorry. So it's phi goes from R to um, R and R2 to R2. So phi of T and X naught is a solution at time t. Okay, it means that there exists. What does it mean? It's continuous. It means there exists a neighborhood of zero and x naught.
such that phi of say let me say it like this phi defined at this neighborhood um, let's call this neighborhood n phi of n is one to one and on to okay so here's a picture so it's So this was the neighborhood, so it starts at some point. I'm sorry, it's, it's sort of centered at this point. So it's going to be, I think I used this. So this is the direction perpendicular to, so that's the local section. These are the um, actual solutions. And this is the neighborhood, right? So this is phi of n. And let's see, if this is t at time 0, let's say we start at x0. So this is going to be x0. So it goes like this. It goes for each x0, there is a straight line. So And... Uh, So let's see what is what does this actually mean here. Um, think about this as not not necessarily as um, well. This is x naught, but this corresponds to. I guess I should have put it uh, at the axis here because I said. What did I say? The interval is centered at the origin. So this should be x naught should be corresponding to the origin. And this is the interval i, right? So this this much is the interval i. There is some interval with respect to t. So it's really a direct product of these two. So what does it mean that this is a one-to-one -one and onto map? Take a point, you know, t and little s, okay? Or maybe. Uh, Let's see if we use S and U. let me use S and U. So the stay with what the book has. So phi of okay, I want to use T and S. Let me use this because so what's this map at a point T and a along the time 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 direction and S in the local section direction. Well, what's that map? It's simply the time evolution with T units of of the point corresponding to S. Okay, So the point corresponding to S would be um, What's the point corresponding to S on this line, on this local section? I said this corresponds to S equals 0. So a point here let's see, how do we write the um, equation of a line? It's basically point on L of X naught on this line corresponding to S. Okay? So let's look at the line L of X naught. L of X naught is starts at X naught, so it's just parameterizing 
it has orthogonal direction f of x naught. Okay, so point here x will be characterized by what? x minus x naught dot product with f of x naught is zero, right? So it means x times f of x naught is x naught dot f of x naught. Okay? All right, so how do we par how can you parameterize the point x? You basically need a unit vector in the direction of of this line, right? So letting um, let's say v unit vector in the direction of L of x naught, so that's perpendicular to f of x naught. You can write x to be x naught plus s v. I think it doesn't matter. Positive or negative? Um, yeah. So it's just just your choice of v is just gonna a direction of v is gonna flip this upside down. Okay. So this point is really the point x in that. In this picture here. Okay? So, I mean, the I mean, granted, this is not explicit. This thing is not explicit by any, mean, by any means. It just says whatever the flow does uh, near a point that is not an equilibrium point, um, it, the flow itself creates sort of a conjugacy, so a map that takes a rectangle like that into um, a flow box near that point. Okay? So every time you... focus at a point that's not an equilibrium point, you will pretty much see a flow that's conjugate to to this rectangular box. Okay. okay. Um, and why do we why are why are we interested in this kind of things? Well, I said that eventually we're gonna be um, we're gonna be interested in periodic solutions, right? So let's say I have a solution that, you know, let's say it's periodic and doesn't contain an equilibrium point. Look at a point that's near, that's on this periodic solution. What are you going to see? You're going to see a local section, okay? And you're going to see a flow box that's going to be parameterized by, by that 
by t the time and by s distance on the on the local section distance I mean just parameterization along the local section okay and on this thing it's going to look boring it's going to be like a like nothing happens, right? Now, of course, things are going to happen if you look at, at the global picture and you're going to say, um, okay, I mean, this is happening at every point, regardless whether this point is on a local, on a, on a periodic solution or not, right? So maybe there's another solution here, it's going to do the same thing. You know, it's going to go to infinity. Local, there's going to be a section there's going to be a local flow, a local flow box, it's going to look the same way, right? Question is, what is, uh, well, what else can we say about a periodic solution or about the local uh, behavior of a point that's on a periodic solution? Okay, so that's that's what we really want to say, um, and the answer is really given by uh, the Poincaré map for a periodic solution and you've seen that concept before um, but it was in one dimensions okay. so anybody remembers what the Poincaré map was for one dimensional systems Well, in the one dimensions, you had a phase plane rather than a phase portrait. For, I'm sorry, phase line. Um, and you're asking about possibility of, have, of, ha of having periodic solutions of a, of a scalar equation. So this is not a system, right? But it's non-autonomous. In non-autonomous, not just any non-autonomous, but what was the requirement to have periodic solutions for this for this uh, direction field? <coughs> it was also what the requirement that f the right hand side was periodic with respect to time. Okay. So it was. It said that you know this was period capital T let's say and then the, the, the uh, direction field was looking exactly the same if you translate it exactly with T periods of time right? maybe in the middle it was doing something else but so it wasn't it wasn't autonomous okay but it was periodic so right? So I'll just briefly uh, re remind you that. But so what was the what was the idea of there? And then we'll see what how it translates in 2D. Said so if you start at one point at time equal to zero, to be periodic solution, it had to arrive at the same point after t equals uh, capital T, right? So what if it doesn't? Well, maybe this was, maybe at this uh, stage it was going indeed periodic, right? So then it was periodic. But how did we single that out? Or how did we uh, find that out? We started with a point here, x naught. It was little x naught. And then we followed the trajectory and we said, The, 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 the very first time it hits capital T, we're going to call that to be the Poincaré map of that point, x naught. Okay? So we, we in effect, we, we were defining Poincaré map in that uh, context, was saying x, take x naught and evaluate it at 
t equals 1, right? So phi of 1 on x0. And this was called p of x0. And periodic solution was, was happening when the point, the point where you end up after t equals t, capital T, how is it compared to the initial point? Same, identical, right? So it, so it was um, basically if p of x0 is x0, then you have periodic solution and vice versa. Okay? So it means that x0 is a fixed point for uh, this punk ram map. Okay. And then what's the, I mean, a good way to represent the punk ram map was just, I mean, the pl uh, kind of plot p of x0 versus x0. Right? And um, even though you cannot really compute it explicitly, sometimes you can say something about the derivative of the Poincaré map or second derivative. Right? So there was there were cases when you could say maybe actually hold on you can always say that the Poincaré map is increasing, for instance, or decreasing. Why is that? Monotone. Let's see why is that? Um, actually, it's always increasing, monotonically increasing. Mm -hmm. If I have a point x one and a point x two, and I follow the the solution up to time t. I'm sorry, I used one, but it should be capital T here. So it's capital T. Um, so this is P of X1. Well, what can, what, what can happen with P of X2? Can it be a reverse order? No, because this, you have uniqueness of solution, so this has to be P of X2. Okay? So X1 less than X2 implies P of X1 less than P of X2. So you, know, you, you always know this, this graph is increasing. The question is, you know, does it have fixed points? So fixed point is point where the graph intersects this line at 45 degrees, right? So, and then you could say that you always have that if you, I don't know, if you have a concave down or some, if you, if you know more about the second derivative, for instance, then you could, um, for instance, say, yeah, this is increasing, but it has at least one, if not, you know, two. Okay. Or maybe it's a straight line. If it's a straight line, then it's going to be only one intersection with a line at 45 degrees, at most. Okay. All right. So this was the situation in 1D. So what happens in 2D? Well, for 2D, certainly we want to talk about autonomous systems. It's nice music. Feels like I'm in a subway in Europe somewhere. OK. Um, All right, so in 2D, here's here's the the well, it's an it's sort of similar concept, but it's not identically uh, the same. So let's assume gamma is a periodic solution, okay, in time. So it means that it comes back after after t equals zero and t equals capital T, okay? So 
solution comes back. So this is gamma, and it's uh, autonomous system, so it doesn't, right? Um, whatever you see now, you'll see forever. I mean, the, the, the solutions, the picture of the solutions don't change, doesn't change. Um, and now, here's what we're going to say. Let's take x, an element, I guess x naught, an element on gamma. So let's say this is x naught. And um, well, x naught not an equilibrium. Right? I guess you cannot have an equilibrium on a periodic solution um, because it, they have to be distinct. Um, and let's assume S to be a local section through x not through x naught. Okay. And this local section it doesn't really have to be. Um, the maximum possible, but you know you should think of, of possibly extending it as long as you can. Okay, but it, it, it's a local section, so it, it doesn't have to be uh, too big. The question is, if I start nearby on the local section, so let's take. Um, okay, this was x naught, so let's let's call this x. Well, let me call this y if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to stay with, I'm going to try to stick with x naught uh, as initial condition. So let's call this y. So that's y or x star. Well, let's call it y. Um, and this is a local section through y. Okay? Then for x naught belonging to s. So this is x naught. Let's say x naught is up here. Does there exist a a time t greater than zero such that the solution starting at x naught at that time belongs to S or hits S again. So if I start, you know, with the solution going like say this way, who knows where this is gonna wander, right? The question is does it hit this again? Okay? If it does we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna say that point is the Poincaré map the first time it hits. So let's call it the... so for if yes um, we call phi t of x naught to be with t as small as possible And positive, of course. Um, the Poincaré map evaluated at x naught. Okay, so it's going to be denoted by p of x naught. So p of x naught is going to be just. the first sort of uh, hit of the local section if it exists starting at x naught okay um, all right so you can see that this is somewhat different than the one dimension because first of all we're going to we, we have to start with having a periodic solution we cannot say we cannot really use the Poincaré map to identify periodic solutions in the plane. You have to have a periodic solution. And secondly, it 
kind of depends, looks like it depends on this local section, on the point and on the local section. So in other words, if I, if I take another point and take another local section, it's going to be a different map, right? So it's very kind of, um, it seems to be very localized. I mean, very, very uh, uh, dependent on the, the choice of your point on the periodic solution. Um, as well as on the periodic solution itself. Okay? So what could be the, the use of this thing, if at all? Mm -hmm. You can tell if the solutions around the periodic solution are approaching that periodic solution or not which if, if that happens, we call it to be asymptotically stable, right? So, so use of Poincaré map. Um, at least in the plane, one can uh, distinguish the nature of stability for a periodic orbit um, whether it is asymptotically stable uh, or unstable So, um, what would correspond to asymptotically stable? Well, asymptotically stable means at this point, the Poincaré map is itself. I mean, the, if I start here, then I go around once, end up with a fixed point, right? And if I start uh, next, I mean, not, not at this point, but close by, then it's going to go towards that point. Okay? It's going to be closer to that point than the origin I started. Okay? So it turns out that if I'm plotting the Poincaré map in the direction of S, so that's S I call the direction of the local section, right? Perpendicular to the flow. Uh, right? At Zero. The Poincaré map is. So this is uh, this is well. This is well. This would be S too, but this is P of S, if you want, right? So the Poincaré map of Y is Y itself, right? But. Um, Let's see, I want to I say P prime, so the, the, the value of the derivative tells you whether you have something that is asymptotically stable or unstable. So I'm claiming that P prime at zero, where this is less than one, then I have asymptotically stable. Because if it's less than one, then it's going to be going like this, right? Meaning the value, it means that P of S is less than S if S is positive. Okay? This is P of S and S. So you start, you start somewhere and you end up with a value less than that, okay? And if P prime is strictly greater than one, then it's, it's, then it's unstable. Because P of S is greater than S when S is positive. So this means it's going away from the, from the periodic solution. Right? So it's kind of difficult to, uh, so this is X naught, and this will start Further away. Okay. 
Okay? So it doesn't approach that, at least on the local section. Uh, you also test inside, that's right. So, right. So if the derivative is, is less than 1, it has to be both when s is positive and negative. Right? Because s, this is when s is 0. Uh, so here we're having something that is asymptotically stable. So it starts further away, gets closer to 0, but also you have to... Um, this is the periodic solution, right? Ah, the picture is wrong. Um, periodic solution is something like this, right? But you also have to have to see insights, and it's possible insight is not approaching, right? In which case, well, the thing is you cannot really test these things explicitly, okay? So, I mean, you cannot find, in most cases, you cannot find the, the Poincaré map explicitly. But we know it exists, we know it's there, and this is, a, this is basically the condition, let's see, yeah, to be asymptotically stable, it has to be strictly less than 1. Um, gosh, you know, I don't think it's actually... What's, what's outside and what's inside the periodic solution can be two different things. In other words, this can have a discontinuity. So maybe I should put it this as... Plus, okay, so on the positive side. So if it's inside, though, E prime would have to be greater than one. If it's inside, I think it depends how you parameterize that. Because if it's inside, let's let's see if I have an inside picture. Then I start with a section here, and I go... This would be a negative value, right? And you want, it, you want the solution to be less negative. So your picture should look... I think still like this. See, so still, still the derivative has to be less than 1. Okay. So this is S negative and P of S. So just the, th the, the thing that the distances have to get smaller and smaller to be asymptotically stable. And uh, But what I'm saying is that you can have a picture where it's asymptotically stable from outside but it's it's unstable from inside. Can that happen? Huh? What do they call that? Semi. Right? It can happen. You can have an example like that. Let, let, me, let me just... Uh, I mean, this, this is pretty unsettling because you don't have exact expressions for P in most cases. Um, but if you have something like r prime equals r1 minus um, okay, let's not do just logistic. Um, although, okay, I'm not okay. Let's, let's look at logistic map and then logistic uh, in r. So if you, if you look at this example, then you know that r equals 0, r equals 1 are two periodic solutions. You know that inside, when r is less than 1, this is positive. So r is increasing inside, right? So, so you know this is a limit cycle. And 
you also know it's asymptotically stable, right? And I guess the you can take this to be the, the local section, or you can take the other one to be the local section. Uh, doesn't quite matter. I think just take this to be the local section, okay? So then I have points going. Um, okay, theta prime is 1. It means it's counterclockwise, right? So it's going this way. So it's going like this, and it's going... Okay, that should be the picture, right? So, can you find uh, the explicit um, form of the Poincaré map for this local section? I think you can because you know, you know, the uh, in polar coordinates at least you know theta is t, right? You know also expression for r. R can be computed, explicitly computed, and I'm gonna uh, cheat, I'm just gonna write what it is, R of T is, uh, let's see, it's R0 e to the T, 1 minus R0 plus R0 e to the T. So let's see, this, as T goes to infinity, goes to 1, as t goes to negative infinity, it goes to goes to 0, right? So that looks like it's, well, I mean, anyway, you can, you can uh, integrate this, you know, separable equation and get uh, exactly that. So, so this is if this is r zero, right? It means that r at um, time two pi, right? So when theta is two pi, so when t is two pi, this is going to be r one. So r one is r0 to 2 pi divided by 1 minus r0 plus r0 e to 2 pi. Okay? So this is exactly the Poincaré map. Poincaré map, right? So the Poincaré map is this, and computing the, first, the derivative will Hold on a sec. Our only problem is this has not been you see the local section didn't start at zero, it started at one. So this is R equals one here. So the Poincare map has P of one equals one. Right? So what we need is we do we don't want P prime, we want P prime at one. So we want, you know, our, our map is, with respect to R0, R1 is something like this. And the question is, does it hit the uh, y, you know, the line at 45 degrees at what angle? With what slope? Okay? And what do you think the slope should be? Well, R1 has to be closer to 1 than R0, right? So it has to be, the slope has to be less than 1, right? Is that true? Yes, 1 was the periodic solution. 
Will the, will the Poincaré map this map? And again, it doesn't make sense uh, for less negative. But f this map just relates the valleys of R0. So this is 1. This is 1. It relates the valleys of R0. Let's say we take a valley that's uh, less, than R, less than 1, right? Then it relates the, the first hit, basically R1. R1 is closer to 1 than R0. So this curve has to have slope less than 1. I mean, you can convince yourself, take the derivative of this with respect to R0. I haven't, but... Um, if you take the derivative of this with respect to R0 and set... Well, not R0, with respect to R and, and set R equals 1. You should, you should uh, see that this is actually indeed less than 1. which basically guarantees that R1, well, this, can, this guarantees that uh, 1 minus P of R0, which is the distance from 1 to R1, is less than 1 minus R0. So it's getting closer and closer to the value 1. Okay. And also it's positive because, why is this positive? The derivative positive, so... Well, it has to be positive. So R1 is, is, is more than R0, right? So it's positive because we talked about R being increasing, right? Inside the circle is increasing. Outside the circle, it's decreasing. So you see, outside the circle, the derivative is negative, but an absolute value is also less than 1. Okay, well, they, have, they made the computation here. The computation is p prime of 1 is 1 over 2 e to the 2 pi, which is less than 1 in d. Okay. Well, that's also from the interior. From the exterior, is going to be negative, but an absolute value less than 1. Okay. So this is 1 minus, I guess. Okay, so the, the okay. The point is the derivative of the Poincaré map in this case, uh, being a magnitude less than one or greater than one, tells you about the nature of that of that limit cycle. Okay. Um, there's actually even even uh, so. Furthermore, uh, well, let me let me say this this way that in general, Poincaré map cannot be complete cannot be computed explicitly simply because you don't have explicit solutions like like we did over there. Okay. Uh, but here's one one fact about Poincaré maps. Um, if x prime is f of x and y, y prime is g of x and y, and gamma of t, gamma is a, a periodic solution. Um, through uh, the point y, okay? So just like we saw in the picture there. So this is y 
and this is a periodic solution. Okay. Then you know there is a Poincaré map and and so forth, um, and it has the derivative has a formula. So the derivative of the Poincaré map at this point y. Now at the point y means really at the point I don't know s equals zero if you want. Okay. s equals zero if you want. Um, is the following is exp so the is the exponential of the integral from zero to t t is a period okay so with period t of partial of f with respect to x plus partial of g with respect to y evaluated at gamma of t with respect to t. Okay, so there is, even though you don't know p exact, p, p explicitly, the derivative of p can be written in terms of of these things. Um, of what? Of what's called a divergence of this vector field, right? So it's partial of f, the first component with respect to x, plus partial of g with respect to y. Of course, this is, is evaluated at along the solution. Okay? All right? So um, this might seem like, you know, coming out of the blue. But really, we've actually made this computation before. If you remember, we talked about the variation of of the um, uh, the var variational equation. If you have a solution, so let me let me kind of. Briefly, well, I don't want to prove this. I don't think I have the time to prove this. Um, I guess before, before, uh, let me say, what, where, where this formula would might be useful? Just, just in. Uh, one would be a case when this would be useful. Well, you really want to show that um, the derivative of the Poincaré map is less than one or greater than one, right? And since I take the exponential of something, then, th then that something has to be either less than zero or, or greater than zero, right? So one instance, for instance, if if the quantity inside here is always negative, let's say, okay? Think about that quantity, the divergence always negative. Then what would be what would this imply? So let's see. If well, positive in uh, entire region, I don't know entire R two for instance. Then well. Then it's po I have an exponential of something positive, so it's greater than it's greater than one, right? So it means unstable, uh, unstable um, periodic solution. Whereas if this was always negative, then p prime would be less than one, so you would have a asymptotically stable. Okay? And see if I have an example of um, a situation where you have that you can verify this expression is either positive or negative.
Mm. Probably don't. You, you've seen this expression when, when this expression is always zero. That was the case of Hamiltonian vector fields, right? The Hamiltonian systems. Right? So, if this is always zero, so like in, uh, like in Hamiltonian systems, then what's the conclusion? Well, this thing is always one, right? And the conclusion is, well, in general, it's inconclusive, right? Because you don't know, um, I mean, just by the fact that this is 1 doesn't mean, you know, you're going in, inwards always or outwards always. But certainly it's consistent with the fact that if you have a Hamiltonian system, then solutions are staying on those level curves and you have st stability, right? Then could be stable. Like in the Hamiltonian systems, we remember its situation is, you know, this every 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 uh, periodic solution is stable. I mean, it's not asymptotically stable; it's not unstable. Right? So it's consistent with that, but it's not. Um, it's not actually you know always the case. Could be also unstable, depend if it's not Hamiltonian system. Um, Let's see, so what I want to say is this formula is still not very uh, practical because it's not always deciding what the, the, the nature of that, uh, of that periodic solution is. You, you have to have a periodic solution um, and you have to kind of know what this divergence does along periodic solutions. Okay? If along a periodic solution it's always positive, then it's an unstable. Okay? If a longer periodic solution it's always negative, then it's uh, asymptotically stable. Okay, so that'll be a use use of this uh, this identity. Um, let's see, the book doesn't really uh, talk about this identity, so I, I just wanted to to point it out. Um, I can actually prove it, but. Well, I'd like to kind of make the connection with what, what we talk about variation, uh, variational equation. So the point is that this is um, comes from the variational equation. Along the solution. Okay. Remember, we, we talked about the exponential of the integral of a trace. Um, and this is just the trace, right? Of what? The trace of the derivative, basically, of that tr of that map. So, so it is. Um, so I guess I, I should just uh, indicate that trace of the derivative of the map f. So if I have x prime equals f of x. Then what's the trace of the derivative of f at x? There's a trace of partial of f with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, partial of g with respect to x, partial of g with respect to y. So this is just partial of f with respect to x plus partial of g with respect to y. Okay. So what you had there is basically uh, exponential of the integral from zero to t of the trace. Okay, of some map, which is a of t. It's time dependent because it depends. It's actually evaluated at along the solution. Okay. So I don't know t t tilde. All right, and we remember we said this actually is um, equal to something. Anybody remembers?
this was actually equal to the determinant of the solution. Well, not of, of a solution x, but of a solution of... So that's not x true, that's x tilde is 2 by 2 metrics solution of x prime equals df of x of t x tilde, so this was a of t. Okay. So the only thing that's new is to connect these determinant with the derivative of the Poincaré map. Okay, so the only thing left would be only thing to show is why the derivative of the Poincaré map at a point s equal to, you know at a point on that periodic solution is the same as determinant of this linearization are the same. Okay. So maybe I mean this I can I can show you this in a few minutes, but um, that's where this that's how this derivative of the of the Poincare map is related to that expression, the divergence. Okay. Um, and again, I'll show you next time how you can use this to decide on a, on a stability of a periodic solution. Although that's not again, it's not by by far is not a universal tool. Okay? But it's a tool that can be applied in certain cases. All right? And hopefully we'll we'll be able to uh, um, you know use this Poincaré map to 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 go to the um, uh, proof of the of the Poincaré Bendixson theorem, which which we um, which is kind of the holy grail here. So, all right. So uh, don't forget the uh, the exams and on Wednesday maybe I'll give you solutions. Okay.